Hello, thank you for joining me. So what I'd like to show you in this video is how to set up a Revit uh, project. Uh, this is going to be a residential design, kind of a, like a large house in a way. Um, it could be any building. But uh, the desire with this uh, video is to kind of show you how to set up a model and use dimensions and make those dimensions fully defined or fully constrained, as uh, Revit might call it. And uh, yeah, and uh, the, the advantage of doing that is that uh, if you have a project that's going to be of very specific dimensions, instead of kind of uh, the, you know sketching this out or modeling out uh, with very rough uh, a rough idea how big it's going to be, you can actually put these dimensions in there and make, make it very specific. One advantage of uh, Revit architecture is that it's a very fluid design. Um, you can go ahead and uh, model something without putting a whole lot of dimensions in there and it uh, gives you the ability to stretch walls both internally and externally and actually mold your model in a manner uh, that until you get a form and a shape and a room size that you find acceptable. But if you want to do the other thing where you have something that's very specific, putting dimensions in there can be rather confusing. There are a number of different steps you can take in order to do it and I'd like to show you that in this film. So I'm going to put in some exterior walls first. So I'm going to go to my wall button. I'm going to pick uh, kind of a more of a complex wall, the exterior EIFS, a metal stud. And we're going to go ahead and start sketching that out. Now you know that uh, when you start a project like this, in order to keep the, the exterior walls, uh, the exterior portion of the exterior wall on the outside, you uh, want to go in a clockwise manner in order to lay out your walls. So this is going to be an L-shaped building. I'm going to start in the bottom and I'm going to start laying this out. Um, uh, if you do find yourself on the other side of the wall, you can always press uh, the space bar and we'll go ahead and reverse it. But sometimes it's not really apparent when you're drawing something out like that where the inside and the outside of the wall is. So if you go in a clockwise uh, manner, that's always helpful. So we're going to draw a wall out maybe uh, 50 feet in the bottom. And before I do that, I'll escape a couple times to get you out of the whole command. Before I do that, and it'll remember that wall type that I just uh, selected, it brings that back. Um, let's go to the options bar down here and take a look at, the, at some of our options. I don't want to do a wall center line, nor do I want to do the finished face exterior as, um, you know, through my class or our book suggests that. I do like the core face exterior, because if you think about the framer is coming in, he's going to be framing the walls on top of the floor, and the core face exterior of the wall will coincide with, uh, with the floor itself. So the edge of the floor is going to be coplanar with the core face exterior of the wall. That's kind of the, the way I would like to lay things out because your carpenter is going to be coming in and doing the layouts and um, he's going to be using the rough, S, uh, you know, the rough um, uh, frame, the rough uh, structure of the, of the walls uh, being put in. He's not going to be, consider he's not going to be considering um, ultimately any of the finished materials both inside and out. So I'm going to belabor that a little bit, but uh, those are my feelings. So we're going to do core face exterior in this. And we're going to start down here. So our first wall is going to be about 50 feet. So uh, if we just type in 50, just like an AutoCAD, it'll stretch that wall out approximately 50 feet. It says it's 50 feet, but um, maybe this side we're going to make this uh, maybe um, maybe another maybe 40 feet. Uh, go over here. Uh, let's go ahead and make that uh, maybe 25 feet. It's going to be L-shaped. And maybe about 20 feet that direction. And then we're going to go over here and pick up that... Uh, now that intersection uh, snap and we'll put everything in, into place. So now we have our, our walls. It uh, gives you the way it's going to look on uh, ultimately on a drawing, on a floor plan level one uh, drawing. But now we want to put in some dimensions. So before we do that, let's go ahead and take a look at our um, our model here a little bit and try to make it a little bit more clear of what, uh, what we're trying to do. Now we did this as the core face exterior on the wall on the exterior walls, but you can't really see where the core is on that. So if you go to the detail level, I'm going to do control bar down here and click on that and go to medium, you can start seeing some details down here. So right now I have, uh, and you might find this uh, useful too, um, the way Revit sets things up when you're on these uh, levels, whether you're looking at things uh, horizontally or vertically, if you're looking at floor plans or elevations, it tries to put in line thicknesses down here. You might find this uh, convenient if you go to the view tab and go to the thin lines button you can toggle back and forth when the drawing when what you're modeling is being prepared to be put into a drawing as it is here the lines can be rather thick and if you go to the thin lines button up here it actually thins those out quite a bit so it makes it a little bit easier to see while you're modeling and you don't have to necessarily take into consideration what it's going to look like in a drawing at least not quite yet so let's put in some dimensions on this 
If we click on some of these walls, you know some dimensions pop up. Uh, they may not be on locations uh, that you might find convenient, but uh, that's okay because we can move these things around. And so ultimately my goal here is not only put dimensions on these uh, walls, but to uh, make them permanent and then lock them in place. So it takes uh, about four five steps. When you initially put it in a wall, now the first dimension you see here is called a listening dimension. It's very fluid. It, uh, you know, it starts from uh, zero and goes on up from there with uh, the resolution uh, depending on how far away you are from the wall. But uh, what you see there is a listening dimension. Once you drop a wall into place, that listening dimension disappears. That listening dimension turns into a, uh, a temporary dimension after you've drawn that and selected it a second time, just like we're going to do here. This is a temporary dimension, so that's step two, or dimension number two, I guess. And to make that uh, the third type of dimension, you can click on this button up here, down here, where it says make this temporary dimension permanent. If you click on that, it makes a temporary dimension permanent. So now we have a permanent dimension. Now I'm going to go ahead and increase my resolution here so we can see what's going on here a little bit better. It might be a little bit too high, so let's go back. Down under view control bar, we can change the scale, and this is uh, in a way in preparation for putting our model into a drawing format. So there's our dimension at 1 16th of an inch scale. Um, so if we click on that wall, we can change that dimension, but what we want to do is take this dimension and put it down here. Now we can do the very same thing by going to the, uh, if we go to annotate and put in some align dimensions, that does the same thing. But I kind of like using the dimensions that are already there and uh, moving these around a bit. So we can take that, uh, that witness line and move it over here, take the whole dimension, put it on the bottom. Now if you remember when we first uh, sketched this wall out, we typed in 50 feet, but now it's not 50 feet, but we can change that. If you try to click in a dimension, it gives us this dialog box suggesting that we can't change that value. It's not going to let us change uh, the value. So one way to do that is click on a wall that that dimension is being modified by. And it gives us two of them. There's our temporary dimension and the permanent dimension. But as long as it turns blue, like it did down here, we can change that value. So we're going to make that 50. That doesn't make it permanent, though. I mean, it does make it permanent, but it doesn't lock it. So if we were to take a wall over here and move it, that dimension moves too. Control Z gets us back to where we were before. One last step, the fourth step in this process, is we're going to make that dimension permanent. Ah, it's already permanent, but we're going to go ahead and lock it. By taking that lock symbol, we're going to click on that and it locks it in place. Now if we try to stretch out a little bit, the whole thing kind of moves on us. Not all the walls, but uh, that wall does. And uh, that, remains, uh, that remains permanent and it's locked, so that's not going to change. Let's do that for some of the other walls. Let's click on this wall, make that permanent, let's drag that over here, take a witness line with that point and drag it down here, click on this wall up here, that turns uh, blue, which means we can modify it, type in 40, and let's click on that dimension one more time and lock it into place. Okay, let's do this wall up here. This comes into a pair up here, 23 on one side, 27 on the other. You might want to keep that if you want, but let's go ahead and drag that up here. And uh, 23 sounds good to me, but if you want to change that again, let's go ahead and click on that wall. Let's say we want to make that uh, 24 or 22. Actually, I think the intent was 22. Make that a little bit skinnier and give ourselves a little bit room, uh, more room over there. And uh, yeah, that puts it in, in place. Now, if we were to click on any other wall after this, there's a dimension. And I think that's the last one we're going to do. This is a 20 foot dimension. Let's go ahead and make that permanent. And uh, I think our witness lines are going to be in the right location, so what we have to do is click on that line in order to change that dimension. We're going to make that 20 feet. And now we're in pretty good shape. So let's say you don't really want this dimension, or maybe you don't want this dimension, you just want to have this one down here. How do you get rid of that? If you were to click on that dimension and try to delete it, um, it takes care of both of them, which is kind of weird. It's kind of confusing at first. It could be uh, an asset, too, if you want to uh, have a, you know, a pair of dimensions like that. Well, let's say you don't really want that, uh, you want to get rid of it, uh, there's a way of doing that. So let's go ahead and lock our dimensions. We're going to go ahead and lock that one, we're going to get rid of this one. One way of doing it is take that witness line and bring it to uh, that core face exterior line, and uh, it just kind of incorporates it into that other dimension, and it's all gone. So now you notice that when we click on some of these other walls now, we don't get any more dimensions that pop out, no more temporary dimensions. But what you do get are some of the constraints that we put in here. This is constrained down here, it's constrained up here. Let's click on that 50 foot wall again. 
same constraints there's a new constraint up here that's showing so if we want to undo some of these things we'll get those dimensions back but uh, it's kind of how you get started with these things and this is now a uh, semi-permanent model that's locked so now when we pull on a wall just to test this the whole thing comes up so let's go ahead and cancel let's do control Z and I think we're missing a dimension down here either that or we didn't we didn't lock these so let's go ahead and lock these guys there's some more constraints it should be fully constrained no more uh, temporary dimension so now we can test that again we move that down move that over it should move as one block now we're never going to be able to uh, constrain this whole model to some sort of a uh, point that might be in, in here, perhaps the origin, and won't let us do that. And the desire here is ultimately we're going to be taking our model and putting it into a site plan, and it's the, the, the points in the site plan, uh, like survey marks and uh, property lines and stuff like that in a site plan, which is going to dictate how this model is ultimately going to look on that site. So right now we're just designing the house with a very basic northeast, south, west um, orientation in here, and then when we get to the site plan we're going to modify and move our house around, our building around, in order to for it to conform properly to what the intent of uh, the designer is going to be, um, the designer's you know, model and how he wants to have things laid out on the site plan. So, gosh, I hope that made sense. But anyways, I think that's enough for this film. I think in the next film I'll show you how to put in um, some mirror lines uh, in regard to planes, and, uh, and then we'll go from there.